Okay, welcome back. So, this is the continuation video after you have threaded your machine. So, we've got our thread coming through the front hole in the plate, not the one directly under the needle. We need to hold this thread once it's under the foot, lift up the foot, and slide our fabric under the needle, under the foot, but keeping the thread underneath all of the work, like so. Keep a hold of your thread. Put your presser foot down, turn the handle clockwise twice. This is to catch your thread into the looper and then start stitching. We're only going to stitch for a few stitches right now. Pull your handle down and let's say three to five stitches or so. Okay, we haven't caught our thread in the looper, is what this means. But again, we need to rotate the handle. Let's remove the fabric. This is great to show actually if we can get up close detail. I'm putting the presser foot down and I'm holding onto my thread. I'm going to rotate the handle. And now I can see as I'm rotating the handle, the thread is in the looper notch because the thread is rocking between about 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock. As described in other videos, we consider right here at the front a 6, the back is 12, I think you get the idea now, 3 and 9. Once it's rocking inside the looper, that means we've got a guarantee within a couple of stitches the needle will pick up your first stitches. Let's try this again, you'll see. I've actually got it there. Can we zoom in on there? You'll see the red thread sitting on the hook. Now, what I advise, after a couple more stitches, snap it off as close as you can to the original start point. This will stop the thread from uh, gathering up your fabric. Let's continue. This is how we start a stitch. I have this machine set with needle number 5 and nipple number 5 and normal serger thread. A little bit heavier than maybe normal, just a fraction heavier polyester serger thread. I'm running the machine quite slow because you will, watching this, probably you're a learner, so I'm just running slow. Now, say we've done our design, let go of our handle, we need to finish off our thread. Now, use a discarded needle or a fresh needle, doesn't matter which one, one of our hooks, doesn't particularly matter which size either, uh, generally a 5 or a 6 would be fine. We need to get into the last loop which is still on the hook. This can be a little bit of hard work. You may need to lift the foot. You may need to move your fabric around just to make that loop a little softer so it's not so snug and tight over the hook which is in the machine. And unthread it. We don't want to crack this off just yet. It can happen that that's what will happen. We're trying to avoid that issue. Try that again. I may split the thread while trying to do this. That's quite common as well. But there we've got it. I didn't split that. I'm actually holding the last loop inside the hook while pulling the, the fabric and extra thread back out. If I have split the thread, it means I won't be able to pull this hook out. I'll need to unloop it again, get in there, make sure I haven't split the thread to be able to pull it through, like so. I would like usually about that much, which is about 3 inches or 4 inches before I cut it off. Now cut the single one which is coming out of the machine off, you may have some snips, and put the presser foot back down on there. That means your machine is ready to go for the next round. Let's come back to our work though, how to loop this off. Pull out the thread so you have a single on the top, Going to the back of the fabric, put your hook through. I prefer to go just a little bit further than the last stitch, though you can go back by one stitch. Using your hook and your thread, loop it over and twist slip through your fabric, like so. So you end up with the hook with the double yarn on it, pull it through. To secure this off really nicely, you can go through previous loop backs 
I'm not going to for this one, but you can simply thread them through. Actually, I should fill for you for this one. Loosen off one of those. Get your hook through there, like so. Again, loop it over and pull it through. It's pretty easy. Now knot it off. Some people don't like to knot it off, thinking it takes too much time and effort. It really comes down to the work that you're doing, as to how much abrasion there is going to be on the back. If you're making cushions, for example, there won't be any abrasion on the back. But if you're making curtains that will need to be washed, or other like garment items that might not have lining, you should knot that off a few times before snipping it off and just leaving a quarter of an inch, if not less. That's the way to finish off your work. Enjoy.